All right, welcome everybody to our paperless webinar. Today we'll be talking to you about, with you about how going paperless can make your practice a lot more efficient in terms of time savings and money savings and just making it an overall more pleasant experience for your team and patients. Um, Q&A is at the bottom. We ask that you put any questions in the Q&A to be answered at the end of the webinar. Of course, as they come to you, we recommend putting the questions in um, as you think of them. And then that way, Kia and I can address them all at the end or reach out to you directly if it's um, something specific to your practice. Now, today I have joining us on our webinar is Dr. Kia Kiani. He's been a software consultant since the 80s and a practicing dentist of over 25 years now. Kia actually had his own practice um, on the East Coast for about a little over 10 years and is now fully on the practicing um, clinician and software consulting side. So lots of great experience here, both clinically and on the software side. So we're very grateful to have Kia with us on today's webinar. Oh, very nice. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for that uh, wonderful introduction. Well, let me that, then introduce you as well. Um, Tiffany is a co-founder of Aspro Dental Cloud Practice Management Software. Uh, before that, she started a company. Before she started the company, she ran a multi-million dollar practice and achieved her MBA in technology commercialization. Um, uh, with, uh, well, with that and with further ado, please uh, go ahead. Thanks, Kia. All right. <laughs> So the current workflow, before we dive into how your practice can benefit from a paperless workflow, let's have a look at how many practices are currently running their office. Now, Kia has some um, software clients and I encounter them as well. Uh, also some dentist friends. And from what we hear, not everybody is on a fully digital workflow. So the uh, current workflow we hear a lot of is filling out paper forms. So, so forms will be printed in the practice and then patients will fill them out and the team will have to upload them and scan them in, which is a lot of busy work. And then there's also, um, we hear different programs that people use um, that layers onto their software. Uh, a lot of retyping, if a patient has written out information, the staff will have to rewrite it over and type it into the computer potential data entry errors. And um, that is a lot of what we hear going on today. Kia, is that? that you... that's, uh, yeah, I, I was gonna mention that uh, actually some at this point still keep the folder, uh, keep the paper that uh, they, the patient filled out in a folder and they're still uh, using paper for everything. Uh, not that they want to, but um, it's a scary proposition to go from totally paper or half paper to uh, computers. And of course, these days, technology makes it much easier to do so. So and I'm pretty sure people who are joining us and are already joined um, will see the, the, how easy it is to actually take care of all this paper uh, without needing to print or scan anything. Now, the first downside of having a paper dependent practice is the loss of time. That's mm. not just the loss of time from printing and scanning with your team, but also time with the patient. So quick side note, little anecdote. Um, I got LASIK a few years ago, and I remember when I went in for my appointment, I know we're talking dentistry here, but in terms of medical practice and having to fill out forms, it was a very similar process to what one would do in a dental practice. Mm. So as a patient, I go into my appointment really looking forward to it. LASIK is an exciting thing to me, at least being able to see. Um, and as we know, not a lot of patients are super excited to be the, in the dental practice. So already there, there was um, an element of, I was excited to come in, but my first impression wasn't, um, the staff greeted me with basically a pile of paper to fill out. And I sat in the waiting area for about 
15, maybe 20 minutes looking through these consent forms and the medical history forms and all of that. And it just brought the tone of my experience down a notch where I came in looking forward to seeing the doctor, to getting my consultation and 15, 20 minutes into this paperwork, I was a lot less excited. And as we know, for dental treatment, um, patients aren't always as excited to go in for dental treatment. Some are for cleanings and such, but in terms of the time that you get with the patient and how much you can benefit from making that first impression, uh, eliminating the upfront paperwork makes your patient experience a lot more pleasant for sure. And then on the team side for your front office staff, the extra steps of printing and having the patient fill out the form and copying it over, that is a lot of little extra things to do throughout the day. Um, before Asper Dental, my very first introduction to dentistry was as you know, frontline, um, front office worker. Um, I didn't know anything about dentistry at the time. And so my job was basically printing and scanning out these consent forms and doing check in, check out. It doesn't seem like a ton of time when you think about it, printing, um, uploading maybe about a minute and a half to two minutes per patient. But when the phone is ringing, when there are actual patients physically in front of your team members, they want to prioritize those interactions over the clerical work. So it adds up to a lot of time at the end of the day on the backlog. And now the other, oh, sorry, Kia, were you going to add to that? Oh, yes. And, and uh, you know, many, many times it happens that the patient arrives and they are supposed to do these forms in the office. And if, even, even if they, were, they arrived five minutes early, that's not enough time for them to do everything that they need to do to fill out these forms. So practically what's, what's happening, you're losing treating time, a patient time, uh, just because the patient is filling out forms. We always ask patients to come 15 minutes early, but who really would come 15 minutes earlier to fill out forms? So I was just gonna mention that it's not just the tedious work of filling out forms. Well, the problem is when they come and it's not ready and it's already the time for me seeing the patient, that puts everybody behind. Great. Just wanted to mention that. <laughs> Thanks, Kia. I think when we get to the later parts of how it really transforms a practice to take the entire mm -hmm. workflow digitally, maybe you can share a story about the last client that you got on. Um, I think she's out here in Southern California. But oh, yes. Uh, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Um, where do I start? She was uh, trying to use. Uh, several companies, uh, one for texting, one for documents, one for um, uh, claims, multiple, multiple, uh, you know, uh, vendors that you have to deal with. And still, because none of these are working together, none of them are in the same place, you still end up doing a lot of manual work with this. So once she actually um, move to ask for dental. This is this is just uh, the way I heard it. They love it, and that's what I heard several times. Why? Because everything was happening from the same software. All text messages that was communicated between the patients and the office is saved in under the patient file. So besides the forms and yeah. We can show an example of that. I think we have some videos later on. So then you can oh, that would be great. To it. I think mm -hmm. it'll be easier to show. Um, yes. And in terms of the outdated paper-based practices, um, there are a lot of costs that can are incurred as well. Studies have shown a lot of practices um, spend about $80 a month on toner. Toners are pretty expensive um, paper about $25 a month and if you use a service for shredding that can be about $50 a month or it's just your team's time to sit there and shred all of those pa um, papers but between the ink and paper that's over $100 per month just on the um, extra supplies for your consent and of course not to mention sanitizing your pens and all of the extra time with that. 
and the repair and the repair of the machines that make copies or scans and uh, sometimes they're not working properly as well so right. so in the modern days of CEREC, of lasers 3d imaging devices canos or just having all of these very um, modern devices in your practice in comparison having paper float around is a much more antiquated process of doing your consent forms. So we wanna help bring everybody into the digital paperless workflow to make everything a lot faster. And not to mention hygiene, which is a big focus right now um, as things are running into summer, um, everyone's a lot more optimistic, but we still pay a lot of attention to hygiene and bringing um, some patients. We've I've seen patients at practices that we work with bring in their own pens so they don't have to touch anything in the office, even though the office already sanitizes their pens. Um, minimizing those touch points in general just makes it a lot faster for your team and also the patients. Absolutely. Now, in terms of the upsides, there were those, um, Kia has a great example with his clients that he was talking about earlier, but in general, we just hear, in addition to the office staff, it's pa the patients who prefer it a lot too. Um, there's, we were, I was in a practice the other week and I was interviewing one of the front office ladies on how they like their new paperless flow. And there was a patient who came in and she figured, why not ask the patient what the patient, he thinks of it. So we asked him, you know, what do you think of having your forms emailed to you and you can fill everything out at home? Do you prefer that? Or do you prefer doing it in the practice where we can walk you through it? And he just goes, oh, no, I love it. I don't want to spend extra time in the office. I want to go in and mm. get my appointment done and then leave. <laughs> so okay. having it filled out at home is a lot more convenient. And um, I wish I could have you know, caught that on camera or something because it was a very candid, great response from the patient. Um, here is an example of how easy that is from the patient's perspective, because in the practice, all that needs to be done for, let's say a new patient to fill out their intake form, you click a button on the patient's profile and it sends a link to the patient to fill out their form um, online via secured link. So this is the email, email the patient gets, they click, no extra portals to um, navigate to, just a mm. regular profile like you would find on any website. There's additional questions that you can customize for your own practice. On the health section, you can either choose a condition. Um, and then if you don't have any, then you would have to, or actually you can customize here too. And if you don't have any conditions and you choose none. So notice here, the patient has to either choose a condition allergy or click none, which makes sure that they can't breeze through and skip any of the questions. So that's a great liability thing for the practice right there as well. Yeah. And once the patient I want to, is done, that's uh, it. Yeah, <laughs> look at this. You are not, you're looking at a Mac computer. I believe this is like a MacBook Pro that you're, you're showing there. I just want to mention, you don't have to have Mac, you don't have to have any specific, you know, uh, hardware. Use your phone, iPad, PC, Mac, whatever you uh, have a browser on, it would work. Right, that's a great point. And that goes for the patients too. We hear a lot of the patients, um, they'll do their intake forms and consent forms last minute from the parking lot <laughs> sometimes. So um, it's still before their appointment, which means that the practice gets access to the information before the patient steps foot in the door. But um, even on your cell phone, whether it's an iPhone or um, Android, there is, um, there's a lot of very fast, easy ways to get your information over. And let me, hold on, the little Zoom thingy is covering. Let me move this over. All right, so then let's go back. Okay, so the upside of being paperless in addition for the patients being able to fill out their forms beforehand and saving them time, it also saves a ton of time for the team. So the form that you just saw with the um, profile information and the health history, that goes in automatically. So this saves on the team's time for scanning and uploading. Um, and then it also saves time on having to retype anything if it's the patient address or information that they put in. Um, 
And it's also one less thing for the front office to do while they're trying to check out other patients, answer the phone and do all of the things that the front gets bombarded with. Um, they can also spend the time if there's downtime to refocus on other things that will bring in more revenue for the practice, whether that's reaching out to overdue hygiene or following up on treatment plans or just anything else that doesn't um, involve you know, uploading and doing a lot of that data entry. Um, on the time savings, because everything goes in automatically. So we'll show you what it looks like from the patient's perspective. Two slides ago that, or sorry, from the office's perspective. Two slides ago, that was from the patient's view. They pulled up their email and got to see the form and then fill everything out. Now here in the practice, um, what the office would need to do to send that email link to the patient is simply click on the patient info button and it sends it to the patient's email. Now, when everything's filled out, we'll go to the health history tab and there is the last updated date with everything that the patient selected. So there's that high blood pressure, there's latex and dander. And then down here, the patient's signature and the date and time stamp of when it was completed. And that, and then you can see the address gets filled in in real time as well once a patient submits their information. So this is great because there's no more, you know, deciphering between is that a one or a seven that they wrote down. And mm -hmm. since everything comes in ahead of time, we hear a lot of positive feedback from doctors who will review the patient's medical history and notice perhaps that they need to pre-med or notice um, that there's some condition that they want to reach out to the patient ahead of time to discuss prior to the appointment. So this is a great way to be prepared for the upcoming appointments as well. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to mention that one of the office managers that, who are using gas for dental was telling me that one of the patients, one of their patients loved this because every time, and he's an older patient a lot, on a lot of medications, and he kept forgetting to bring the list or the medications that he's on. But since they started doing this at home, the wife is doing it for him. And all the medications are now in the patient's file without an error. So one more thing to help the practice and help the doctor treat the patient in the right, uh, right way. Agreed. It's sometimes a lot easier to do things on your own time and at your own pace mm -hmm. rather than yep. under pressure of having to do everything in the practice. Absolutely. And another upside of going fully digital is it's in general just more modern. So when we think of going fully digital, the first thing that comes to mind are those consent forms, the patient intake forms and all of that. Um, the what we don't always think about is the difference between um, digital versus paper notes and progress notes. Um, I know probably, I think this statistic was somewhere around more than 80% of modern dental practices are using practice management software. So everything is already on the computer, um, but not all of the modern software have the ability to search through your notes like you would on an email or a phone. You know, if you're ever looking for an email and you don't really remember who it's from, you don't remember exactly, was it last week, was it a month ago, but you do remember a certain line they wrote and you're looking for it. So you can search up your email by referring to a certain word or a certain phrase that you remember having in the email, or same thing with searching for your text messages. So one of the perks of having a modern um, cloud practice management software using the latest technologies um, is that you can fully, um, you have your clinical progress notes as fully searchable and fully indexed. So here's an example of what that looks like. Um, you'll start to notice for a lot of practices out there, if they're, if you've been in practice for, you know, five years, 10 years, 15 years, and you start to see the same patients over and over again, multiple times a year. And by the you know, by the 10th, 5th year, even even second year, if they have a lot of appointments, you can end up with a lot of progress notes. And for a lot of systems where if you have to open up each note and read through to find what you're looking for, that can end up being very time consuming, especially if the patient's right there with you in the operatory waiting for your answer on something or um, your 
you know, diagnosis, if you have to refer back to a previous note to check on, um, let's say, history for um, frequency or anything like that. So here's an example of how easily it is to search for a note. If you take good notes, you can reference any word from that progress note. So here, um, to create a progress note, we're just going to complete that procedure. And then in the note, let's say we write something about the, um, the patient's visit and specifically that they chipped this tooth that we needed a bonding on while they were eating an almond. So now, once we save this note, um, back on the history of all of the progress notes, you can see here a lot of them, but if you search for the word almond, it pulls up the note with the word in it. So that is super convenient, especially if you've had multiple years of history. If you search in you know, vacation, you can pull up a note where mm -hmm. the patient told you that they, um, wanted whitening before the vacation appointment in case of any records. Um, this is... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say right here, a lot of dentists, at times, they wanna see every note about a certain tooth. Let's say it's number three. Now, most dentists, when they make clinical process notes, they mention the tooth number. Now, if I wanted to see the his all the history, about that number three that I have treated the patient for, I can just search for number three and all the notes are in one spot. I don't have to look through dates and years, months and years. I can just see everything from the very beginning as, as, as I diagnosed the tooth, maybe 10 years ago until today, whatever has happened to this tooth will be right there in front of me. So that's, that's priceless. I agree. And after a while, the visits will might kind of blend together. So <laughs> it's yeah. good to be able to quickly see what you're looking for. Um, mm -hmm. Now, let's move. So another upside of going paperless is that in general, it's just more hygienic. Um, the best example of this is the patient I was referring to when I was visiting a practice a few weeks back. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in the waiting area, waiting to talk to the doctor. Um, this patient comes in and the front office asks her if she's had a chance to fill out her consent forms because they weren't, um, they weren't received yet. So the patient goes, oh no, um, I, you know, I've been really busy. I have a pen. I can sign it in the office here. That way I can use my own pen. And so the front mm -hmm. office um, worker, go, staff member, told the patient that, you know, actually, um, if you don't want to touch anything on our practice, if you don't want to even have a, you know, paper to sign, we can email you the form again, and you can pull it up on your phone and use your own phone to sign it. And this patient, she was very, um, she's very attentive to those touch points in the practice. <laughs> so I'm not sure if that would be something um, quite as many patients are sensitive to, but she was very grateful to have the opportunity to pull out her own phone and use that and sit down in the waiting area and um, do it on her own time too. So a lot mm. more um, hygienic and just patients will appreciate the uh, being able to use their personal devices. Here is an example of what that will look like. So I'm going to show you here two perspectives. One is from the practice. It's this computer is, let's pretend we're sitting in the dental practice, and then this phone right here, let's pretend that we are the patient looking at our email. So in the practice, I would click on consents to select the consent form, maybe a COVID screening. So we'll need for a few more months, fillings. Um, and then here I can edit the form and put in any teeth numbers. And then notes on the bottom if you want notes for it too. And here we'll send it to the patient's email. So on the patient side here, the email is received. They click on that link, same as the patient intake form link, and sign on their phone. Um, there's the tooth number, number three, like we put in in the practice. And then click confirm and get a confirmation page. Now back in the office, once, as soon as the patient clicks confirm on their device, you can go to the patient's documents tab right here. 
and you'll see all of the consents get automatically pulled in in real time and they have the patient's signature right down there and the date stamp as well. So it is super convenient for the patients to fill this out beforehand, but if the patients are in the practice and let's say you, know, you might have a really elderly patient or you might have a patient who is a walk-in or you might have someone who came in for a cleaning, but now they want to just add that one bonding or you know, a quick filling in the back because there's extra time in the office. So for those circumstances, or maybe they're just people who forget <laughs> and um, aren't good at signing things beforehand. So you can still have the patient sign um, in the practice. If you have a, a lot of practices we see use Chromebooks because they're a cheaper option. I think they run anywhere from um, two to 500, depending on the device. But we also see a lot of practices use iPads. They're you know, really nice and pretty or um, Windows tablets. Anything with a touch screen will make it very easy for the patient. Um, you would sign the consent form the same way. So here, instead of clicking send to email at the top, you would just click sign now and it would go straight to the signature page for you to hand over to the patient to sign in the practice. Mm -hmm. And that's really cool because it's the same automatic, even if it's in the practice, you don't have to print anything out. You don't have to scan anything back in. It goes mm -hmm. straight into their digital chart as soon as they sign it. Mm -hmm. And now, Lastly, everything comes back to saving money because as we know, a financially healthy practice is what we're all aiming for. Um, you know, the livelihoods of every team member and just keeping things running smoothly is one of the big goals of having any business. So the money savings comes um, from a lot from saving time. In addition, you know, of course, there's the paper, the printer, and all of that, maybe extra programs you have layered on to do these things, but having it within your practice management software can save a lot of money there. Um, but in terms of time, for, for me and in my experience with the practices we've worked with, that's the most valuable thing to them. Um, saving time on the front end with the front office team where they can spend more one-on-one -on -one time with the patients who are actually in the practice um, without having to do all of these um, little tasks. We also hear that things pile up at the end of the day. So it's a must, much more stress-free environment when these um, little things don't pile up so much because they get automated by the documents going straight into the folders um, throughout the day as a patient signed them. And then, um, Actually, there's one more form that we didn't go over. So we talked about the patient intake form and we talked about the consent forms, but there's one more, which is the treatment plans. And these, we have, we um, a lot of practices that we work with will are still adamant about presenting treatment plans in person in the practice, which I personally completely agree with. Um, it's a lot easier to explain what the patient needs and to make sure they're on the same page um, mm -hmm. um, and get that treatment acceptance in person. But there are times when the patients will, you know, they'll be running out to take their kids to soccer practice or they're running to their next appointment or just something will come up where they can't sit with you the whole time to review the treatment plan. So it's really convenient also to have the option to email the treatment plan for their signature afterwards. Um, so here I'll show what it looks like to have the form signed in the practice um, digitally as well and what that looks like. So here we'll select this third priority, for example, and present the treatment plan. Um, the insurance information is calculated. There are templates that can be added so a quick note on the templates, um, not every practice uses them, but we see some interesting uses, uses for the templates. So some people will have um, just standard financial terms, but other practices we see little notes that they provide for what the procedure is. And since the templates are tied to procedure codes, you can, for example, put in there, what is a crown, why do you need it? Or what is a filling, why do you need it? And things like that. because 
As we know, as much as a patient tries to absorb while they're there in the chair and treatment's being explained to them, it's always nice to send patient home with something that they can refer back to when they're trying to explain this treatment to their spouse, to their parent, whoever um, is important to them and explain why they need the treatment. And it will save you a lot of time um, in case you know, calling back in the practice to clarify or just misunderstandings here and there. So that's a great use of the treatment plan templates from a lot of practices that we see. Um, and then here you can type in additional things as well, just note section. Um, the teeth numbers are highlighted and you can sign here. At this point, you would pass the iPad or um, tablet to the patient and they would sign it and confirm. And when they confirm, you can see up here the note on top, that treatment plan has been sent to the patient um, with their signature. So they get a copy immediately of what has been signed and what treatment they're doing. This is fantastic because once again, it eliminates having to print anything out and send, you know, hand to them. In case when the patient's done with their appointment and the treatment plan has been presented and the front office ladies just get you know 10 calls coming in at once or a new patient walking in and they forget, for example, if they forget to send that treatment plan um, or print it out and give it to the patient, here's another loop back where it's catch up work. They have to later on print it, scan it and then email it to the patient. So having that taken care of ahead of time um, and being automated will take that load off of your team as well. And another cool thing is once that treatment plan has been signed, it gets saved in the patient's documents tab again with their signature. And you see here. Now, just like the consents, you have the option to sign it in the practice or um, email it to the patient. So I'm gonna rewind. Here where we had the sign here button on the bottom right, you can see the send to email on the top right as well. So that will send the patient their treatment plan for their signature. And in the documents tab, rather than saving the treatment plan with the patient's signature, where the patient's signature is, there will be a timestamp that says sent to patient on this date at this time. So it's a great way for your team also to keep track of, did we send it to this patient or what did we send them? Um, and if the patient is saying, oh, no, I didn't receive it, then the team can say, well, actually, you know, we sent it on this date and that time and they can back up their own um, work with actual data. And the recent as easy again, if we need to. <laughs> yep. yep. Now we went over a lot of different ways where taking a practice fully digital and um, on off of paper can be beneficial. So to quickly recap, um, I think we started the webinar, we intended to do five ways um, the paperless patient experience can benefit the practice, but we ended up with a lot more than five. Um, so <laughs> I'll go over the, um, the most important ones that are at the top of the list. First of all, it's that um, there's, there's a lot of time saved and the patients prefer it and the office prefers it. So you can see more patients because there's um, a more efficient workflow of getting the information ahead of time for your consents and health history. And then the patients doing their paperwork at home makes it a lot more accurate as well because they're able to control their input versus having someone re-enter um, the information. And having everything stored and backed up automatically is a great liability plus for you and the team. Um, and it also, of course, is another time and headache saver. Um, and overall, we truly believe that bringing your practice fully digital can make the whole process of your day a lot smoother. But in the instance that you ever do need a paper record of something, because we know that we're not covering every possibility under the sun here, maybe sometimes you do want a paper printout for some reason. So what's great about everything being stored in that documents folder is that they're stored as PDFs, so you can still print them out and do anything you need to with the paper form. Yeah, one thing that I wanna mention here is time saving for patients translates in convenience. Time saving 
in practice translates to money yes. and convenience. <laughs> so uh, this is this is this works both ways. It's not just better for the patient or just better for the doctor. It it really works both ways. So I just wanted to mention that as well. Yeah, and I think even though we can't quantify it, um, the mm work experience of your team and being less stressed about busy work completely changes the atmosphere and it definitely frees them up to do things that they may not have time for before because they were doing a lot of busy work and i think um, a really great way to spend that time is you know tracking down unscheduled treatment or looking for mm -hmm. patients who are due for their hygiene because these are things that will actually bring more revenue into your practice so we're not just decreasing the cost, we're creating opportunities where you can go out and actually increase your uh, top line number. Yeah, much more efficient office, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, there, um, if you're still not convinced or if you're unsure about how to get started and going paperless, we are more than happy to start a conversation with you um, via phone or Zoom, whichever way is most convenient for you between your busy day of patients. Um, we have a paperless product where you can do just the consent forms, treatment plans, and all of that if you're not ready to go with a full um, new cloud practice management software. Uh, we also have other resources like our ebook and software comparison chart on our website. So you can feel free to contact us. Um, my email is tiffany at aspardental.com and I can put you in touch with Kia for his consulting advice on that because he has had so much experience and seen a lot of practices go through this whole process and we'll be able to explain what it looks like and what it feels like to go, go through the same thing. Um, while we're talking about resources though, there I wanted to show everyone who's on a sneak peek of um, a resource that we just created. If you're not sure what you're currently paying for in your practice and where you could be cutting out um, extra things and costs, we have a worksheet and I'll show you right here um, of what you're currently paying for and where the costs in your practice can be um, hopefully eliminated or consolidated so that your overhead per month for per month is not so much. So feel free to reach out and we'll send this worksheet to you as well. Um, it breaks down the different services that you may be paying for between you know software support, data backups, and um, you know, IT support. Um, if you're using another service for appointment reminders and texting, um, consent forms, and if you're paying per claim, um, how much you could be paying per month that you may not notice if it's just a recurring bill every month. Um, and then on the administrative tasks, if your team is spending a lot of time on busy work, um, this part of the worksheet would be useful to actually ask them how much time they think they spend. Um, and it might be good for them to actually time themselves too, rather than guesstimating. But let's say if they spend, you know, a certain number of time on these tasks per um, per day, then and if you're paying someone, let's say, a sixteen dollars per hour, then here is the total monthly spend on software services and those administrative tasks. And it's just a, you know an estimate of where you could potentially be saving on that. But now that we are um, toward the end of the webinar, I'm going to move us over to Q&A, unless um, Kia has any other um, things to add on that. Um, the only thing is that, of course, if you ca uh, caught, uh, caught on this a little late, uh, because we noticed that a few people uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, signed up or signed in a little later on. We are here to answer any questions. Uh, just you know, contact contact us via email, and um, and we will definitely set up a time to sit down with you and go over all your questions. There is no obligation. Uh, we know we are here to see if we can, if there is a way we can help your practice grow. Uh, more, more efficiently. 
let's um, see how many questions we can get through <laughs> before okay. our um, scheduled end time. So first question, what is the way of ensuring that this is HIPAA compliant? So um, I think that's in reference to the email forms because the patients can click a link and go straight to filling them out. Um, everything stored on our servers is HIPAA compliant. The information is encrypted, encrypted on the way there when the patient sends it in and on the way back when the front when the dental practice pulls up the information to view. So um, the whole storage and process there is HIPAA compliant. Um, we still recommend sending the patient um, a consent form before you send other forms. The first consent form should say that they're signing off on email communications um, and that they're okay receiving reminders for their appointments or anything like that via text and email, but otherwise it is fully HIPAA compliant. Um, the only thing that we as a software company can't control is where the computers in the practice are. So of course we would advise any um, dental practice to make sure that you know, your schedule isn't open with everyone's names or um, a patient's chart isn't open in an area where there's high foot traffic, but I think those are things um, a lot of practices are already you know, doing. Um, okay, here's a question about the progress notes. Which practice management software do not have searchable progress notes? So I can't speak to the whole, you know, all the practice management software out there because I don't know if I've seen them all, but of the ones that we've seen, um, you can sort by tooth number, you can sort by provider and by date, but I personally have not seen any other software out there where you can actually search for it, like in your email or your phone, except for ours. But of course, um, if there is a practice management software out there that I just haven't come across that has it, then I can't speak to that. But as far as we know, um, we are the only ones. Um, I have never seen anyone yet, and I have seen a lot of impact management software, and none of them have search by keyword at all. Oh, um, speaking of other practice management software, so I have a few questions here on, is there a limit to how many people can access the program? I think you mean in terms of how many um, of your team members can log in to the practice management software at the same time? I've seen certain programs where um, if I have a login, I can only log in on one computer. And then another, if I want to access the second workstation, I have to use someone else's login and it only allows one person at a time. Um, that's not the case here. It's kind of like, uh, think of it as pulling up your email. And there are, there's an unlimited number of people who can access the program if you add um, team members, or if you're training a new one or having someone in just for the summer, or anything like that, we, you know, there's no extra cost or um, limit on adding them. Let's see. Um, okay, a few about the paperless systems. So if, can I use my old practice management software with your paperless system? Um, does it integrate with our practice management software? Um, some common ones, EgoSoft, Dentrix, Open Dental. Um, I see a soft tint in here too. Okay, so for the, um, for the pra other practice management software, we can import your patient demographics. So we'll have your patients list and we'll have their email addresses and you can send them the consent forms by looking them up on the patients list and clicking that consent button or send patient info button. So it's not a um, direct integration, but we can pull the information out of your practice management software and put it into Ask for Dental so that you can send your forms through there. Um, and a follow-up question is, is this actually a practice management software? Yes, it is. We are a full practice management software, but due to popular demand and people wanting to get their toes wet before they jump in, uh, we started offering our easy paperless module where you can do all of the electronic consent forms and treatment plans and uh, patient intake forms without switching over your entire practice management software until you get a feel for it. Um, a good, Although you're uh, more than welcome to switch the whole practice management mm -hmm. software if you wish to, but yeah. Yeah. 
there we definitely welcome that <laughs> yeah um, there is no no pressure to um migrating data there are a few questions on that um if i am using easy paperless and want to use the full software is it easy to move everything over so yes we just have to activate your electronic claims and all of that and convert over your data so depending on what practice management software you're currently using that's a question that we can um, reach out to you directly and talk about the process and moving over your data so that you can get your um, patient information and the things that you need to run your practice once you're on Asper Dental. And then um, I joined late, will I get a recorded version um, of this presentation? Yes, Zoom will send out a recording. Um, I hope that we can edit it first or you might list, be listening to a few minutes of us chit chatting, <laughs> but you will definitely get a recorded version of the full presentation so you can catch the beginning where we share some fun stories and you know explain who we are. <laughs> um, let's say if you are only importing parts of the patient chart, do I need to keep both software, old and ASPRO? Um, it depends on what your data looks like in the software that you're currently using. So this one, um, we have some clients who will switch over entirely and dump their old software and do it that way. We have other clients who bring over certain things that they need to run their practice, but they want to keep the system, their new system clean and uncluttered because a lot of things pile up from, you know, using it if you've had your same program for uh, 10, 15 years, if you've had different office managers who do different things a few different ways or even different doctors, um, things start to get messy. So for other practices, we've seen um, that they'll bring over certain things that they need and then refer back to their old program for other things. Um, within, we hear about six months, that's when they stop relying on the old program or referring back to it so much because um, six months when the patients start to come in for their recurring visits, uh, the new data is created and you kind of slowly start weaning off. But it really depends on um, how the process you would want it to work for your particular practice. And we can advise to that and give you more um, detailed, a more detailed look at what that would entail. Um, if you want to reach out to us directly, feel free to just shoot an email over. Um, you can send it to me, tiffany at asperdental.com. And um, just let me know that you were on the webinar and you have some quick questions and we can jump on a call real quick um, or however is best for your time. Um, does it integrate with Softit? Yeah, so that's one of the, um, we, we do have a history with bringing over data from Softent. Um, we would be able to bring over the, you know, depending on if you wanna use it for the consent forms or the full practice management software. But either way, um, we will bring your patient data over so that you can contact them and send them those forms and um, see your clinical notes and all of that. Um, I think uh, Kia actually addressed that regarding the patient side. So the question here is, what if I use both PC and Mac? Um, it doesn't matter for the dental practice or the, um, the patient. Either one, it's a web a web page. So, if you um, if you pull up your email on Google Chrome or Safari or uh, Microsoft Edge or whichever browser, as long as you have a browser installed on whatever you're using, um, it's not only just PC or Mac. It's also fully compatible with, let's say, a tablet or um, not a full operating system. What I mean by not full operating system is like we have um, the Mac operating systems, Catalina, you know, all of those ones. We have Windows, Windows 10, Windows, um, I don't know all of the versions, but um, those are full operating systems. Uh, there are also ones that aren't full. So, for example, your tablet, your iPhone, your iPad, um, you can't run full programs, but you can have apps. And one of the apps is a web browser. So your web browser app, whether that's Safari, Google Chrome, Firefox, um, you'll be able to access the program from there. Um, a question about the data 
it lives on cloud, not the server. So yes, that's correct. It's the way um, I would, I keep going back to uh, email because I think that's the, the best example that we have. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with um, Dropbox or Google Drive or anything like that, um, but it's basically a cloud server. So the server doesn't sit in your practice. It does, there are physical servers out there. Um, the ones that we use are through AWS, Amazon Web Services, um, and then x-rays are on Azure that um, belongs to Microsoft. But how their servers work, they have gigantic server farms across the nation. And your data is stored across a few of those, which means it's redundant. So the beauty of that is, let's say in your practice, if you, if someone knocks over a server, if you spill coffee on it, or just a power out outage and something happens to it, well, um, you have your backup, but if your backup is physically, you know, elsewhere on the server or on a CD or, you know, um, USB or something and something happens to that, then that's all your data. You, it's very physically tied into um, your own caretaking. But if you have your data on the cloud, then it's stored on these um, servers hosted by Amazon Web Services, Microsoft and all of that. So if one of those servers goes down, there is a duplicate copy of your data across the other ones and they ping off of each other. So it's practically impossible for your data to be lost um, in that sense. It's the same way that you have your email everywhere um, and it doesn't just you know, randomly disappear or um, your banking is also online. Um, and I think that's definitely the direction of a lot of um, data storage because it is actually more secure um, rather than having your local IT person take care of your server and your network. Um, Amazon Web Services has like a whole team of cybersecurity experts who make sure their whole job is to make sure that the data is secure. Um, okay, so here are a few more. I'm gonna take two more. So one is, are you saying I can run my practice on a tablet? I don't need an expensive server. What about x-rays? Um, you can run the majority of your practice on a tablet. I think for x-rays, um, anyone who is familiar with the process, you have to plug your sensor into a computer computer via USB or ethernet, depending on which one. Um, so that's the only thing that will require a full computer computer for but you can use a laptop. Um, we have some clients who do a lot of mobile dentistry and they've purchased laptops, um, nothing crazy, like maybe anywhere from five to $800 laptops. Um, and you can bring that laptop from operatory to operatory uh, and plug your sensor into it if you wanna run the whole thing on tablets and just have one laptop for taking x-rays, it's um, up to you. The practices are all run a little differently. And once the x-rays are captured on that laptop, they are up in the cloud and you can view them anywhere. Just like once you compose an email, then you can log in on any computer and you can see what you sent. Um, okay, so last question here. Multiple users can use the program at the same time, like having five operatories, do I need a special internet connection? Nope, you don't need a special internet connection. Um, the five operatories can all, uh, as long as you have a computer or something that connects to the internet, you can use it. Um, you don't have to have any special setup with that because the encryption is done on our side on the website. So every user has their own login and password. Um, the storage is unlimited and um, there's, yeah, if, Ever the internet in your practice goes out, you can also use your phone. Um, oh, okay. Here's, yeah, exactly. What if Wi-Fi goes down? There's the next question. Um, I'm just reading people's minds. If the internet goes down, we see practices will use their phones. Um, I haven't actually heard of any of our clients having the internet go down for a full day or even a full hour, but I know that different regions of the states have different um, reliability for internet. So if you're in one of those areas or just don't have um, internet that's really reliable, you can always hotspot it off of your phone 
or um, you can actually use your phone to do your notes and scheduling and all that. Or you can use your phone as a personal hotspot and use your computers using the Wi-Fi from your phone or sorry, the mobile data from your phone. Um, one, our, one of our clients who does those mobile events, they are actually fully on, um, not sure if you have seen those little MiFi devices, they're like this big and you pay for data for them just like you would for your phone. Um, but all they do is create a data signal. So if you turn it on, you can connect any device to it as though it were regular internet, which I mean, it essentially is just regular internet. But if you have one of those as a backup, then you essentially always have um, always have, you know, data or access to the internet. Okay, I think oh. that was a um, very rapid fire uh, yeah. Q&A session, but um, I think Kia, was there an offer we wanted to share for all of our viewers who made it through this end of the day webinar? Yes, uh, so what I was uh, thinking was to offer people a month of trying this for free and uh, just just judge it for yourself you know just play with it use it if you need to and see how easily this works if at the end of the month you love it then it's 195 dollars per month no contract and if you don't for whatever reason that we, we would like to know then um, then, then no, uh, no obligation. So I, I think uh, uh, every office, every practice management, uh, every practice needs to, to give this a try. No, no one who has used it said that this doesn't look good. Yeah. As you probably already saw it through, throughout the webinar, it's very smooth, very, very nicely done. And you can eliminate your paperwork, meaning the paper mm -hmm. and the work. <laughs> so make your the life for your team and your patients a lot easier. That's what we're here for. That's the, the goal. Just contact us and we'll set you up. Yep. And that brings us to the end of our webinar. Thank you all for hanging with us. I know it's a the end of your work day. So we actually already have some emails coming in with um, information requests. So I can promise you we'll get back to you very, very soon and have a great evening. See you on the next webinar. Thank you, Tiffany. Thanks, Kia. Bye.